Welcome back, Source Nation. You're listening live to Love Zone Mondays with Kathy B. Welcome back, Sports Nation. Welcome back. You're listening live right here on Love Zone Mondays. We have about two hours before we lose the live feed. Well, as I was speaking with you guys before we went to break, I said that I'm going to have an amazing young lady here in the studio with me. I'm excited to be still with her. I am speaking with the beautiful and talented Julie Watley. She's coming in tonight. She's going to give us some great information on her brand new self study guide. While we wait. Now, one thing that I I love most about what I was able to read on Julie was the fact that she's giving us strategies on how to attract your ideal partner and really begin to create the relationship that you truly desire to have. And that's one of the things that I I talk about often here on uh, Love Zone Monday, Force Nation, is the fact that you want a relationship that you can really begin to strive for longevity and success. And I know that Julie's going to come in and she's going to give us some great tips. Now, she went on to say in her bio, she said, you know, if you don't have the time to devote to one-on-one group program, this 60-page workbook contains 13 unique exercises really to determine to help you when you're ready to find love. So I know that we're going to get some great information. I do believe that Julie is here in the studio with me. Julie, hello and welcome to Love Zone Mondays. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for being here on Love Zone Mondays. And, of course, Julie, you know, I didn't give your bio justice, and i tell you why. We've had the opportunity really to begin to share you with the Source Nation family, and I know that you're going to come in and give us some great information. So if you will, if you take a moment just to introduce yourself to everyone that is listening, we'll start the show from there. Sure. Um, So, uh, as you said, I'm Julie Wadley. I am a a professional matchmaker and relationship coach. Um, I've owned Eli Simone Matchmaking and Coaching for about three and a half years. This is going on my my fourth year. And, um, you know, really excited about helping women, especially with their love-life balance. I call it love-life balance because every woman is is on a different place in this sort of love balance cycle, whether they are dating um, or not dating or and, and want to be dating or they're dating and want to take their relationship to the next level or they're in a marriage but they want to, um, you know, have more or do more, they're kind, of, they're kind of feeling stuck or, you know, towards the end maybe they're divorced and they're just getting back into the game. So no matter where they are, uh, I want us to, I want to help them employ a strategy that will get them exactly where they want to be. So um, I have been doing that. I've been working with uh, clients one-on-one and in-group sessions and classes and seminars. But, um, you know, I was just thinking, how could I reach more people who may not have the resources to do maybe a one-on-one or, you know, maybe haven't um, you know, thought about doing coaching or, or hiring a matchmaker? And I said, you know what, let me put together this guide that's really quick. Um, you know, it's about 60 pages, but it gives them an opportunity to really sit down with themselves. You know, they don't mm-hmm. have to, you know, if they're shy or if they're, they're very private people, they can sit down with these with this workbook to say, okay, this is where I want to be, um, and I need to kind of jump in here and figure out, you know, where's what type of life do I want to lead, and then what type of relationship do I need to have that's going to align to the life that I want to lead, and therefore then the man um, that would that would complement that. So um, it's really for people who maybe don't have a whole lot of time to devote to a structured program or someone who mm-hmm. is extremely shy, extremely private, and just wants to uh, get the information for themselves. Wow, I love that. I love that. Now I want to just jump right in and talk a little bit more about the workbook. I love the fact that you were able to accommodate um, all types of of people that are really, truly looking and desiring to have um, love in their life. Um, I'm, I'm all for either being in a group or doing, you know, self study. But at the end of the day, I think we all desire to have that that perfect love. So let's talk about that, uh, Julie, mm-hmm. and, and what you've been able to develop and, and some of the successes that you've had with the program. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. <clears throat> so um, the program, like you said, is, is really designed to 
help the person or help the woman um, wherever they are. It's really defining if they're even ready to be in a relationship. Um, you know, sometimes we have an idea of what we want, but we don't really know what that all entails. You know, you, you know, you kind of say, I want, I want this, but you really don't know until you're in it. So um, the, the worksheet, the workbook actually gives um, step-by-step guidance on, um, you know, where I am in my relationship readiness, and then kind of going from that to, all right, what's, what's going on in my life? What's going on um, with where I am now? And is that, is that is that helping or hindering um, me wanting to be in a relationship or, or finding person that I want to be with? You know, sometimes we're in a career or uh, we're just in a place where we're not really devoting a whole lot of time to getting to know new people or making connections or um, just don't just really don't have time for anything personal. So we push it to the side, even though we still mm-hmm. want it. Um, so this is really saying, okay, let me put my life on paper. Let me write it down because, you know, we kind of go, we kind of get into this routine where we're just wake up, do our thing, eat, sleep, and repeat. But nobody, well, not a whole lot of people really spend the, whole, the time to write down what their life vision is, like their mission statement. So this is saying, what is my mission statement? What is my purpose? What is my vision? And then that would lead into, okay, if whatever my vision is, how do I see my relationship working with that? Do I want mm-hmm. a, do I want a um, you know adventurous love life? Do I want there to be spontaneity? Is it more laid back? Is it more you know I'm I'm fine with just movie dinner and a movie every night or you know what type of what type of uh, relationship can you see fitting into this lifestyle that you're creating for yourself? And then once you have that, then you can start to say, okay, what type of guy, what type of qualities does this guy need to have in order to fit in with that? And then once you start thinking of that guy in those terms, not in terms of, oh, he's got to be six foot, he's got to be this, he's got to be that, you know, all the external aesthetic things, we start to say, okay, what type of personality, what type of value set, what type of characteristics does this man have to employ in order to, you know, to really align to the relationship that I need to have in my life? And so that helps when you're going out and you're out and about and you're meeting meeting new people. Um, you can quickly see if the people, the men that you're meeting or the or the people that you're meeting, um, either fit in with this vision and this relationship that you have in your mind, or they don't. So that mm-hmm. gives women um, an opportunity to easily put men in a no category, maybe category, or oh yeah category. <laughs> I love that. I love that. You know, and just <laughs> listening to what you're saying, um, Julie, I, I find it to where if you're going to devote yourself to a program like this, you have to be very transparent. Absolutely. And, and and what I mean by that, and, and I, I use this word quite often um, on this program, you know, when you're becoming a transparent person, that just means that you have to begin to look at yourself, you know, in a, in a roundabout way, honest mm-hmm. and true, meaning if you know that you have flaws and you know them, write them down so you can see them. Because this is what yep. other people see too. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and, it, and it's crazy because they they can see them quicker than you can because you hadn't admitted to it. So let's talk about that right. for for one minute because I think mm-hmm. that and I'm and I am in Source Nation. Please know that I I am a very transparent person, Julie. You know, especially I have had two marriages mm-hmm. <laughs> and two divorces. So, mm-hmm. with that being said, I still don't think that I'm 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 down for the count when it comes to love because I know that the the right person and the and the right relationship that I desire to have will present itself one day. That's the reason why I'm taking mm-hmm. care of me and and understanding who uh-huh. I am, so I can offer that. So let, let's talk yeah. about that because transparency can be a hindrance if you don't understand it. Talk to us from your standpoint with the workbook and what you've been able to do with your clients. Has that been something hard for um, folks to to do and understand? Yes, and here's why. Um, we t- 
I mean, and, it, and it's a human, it's a human nature thing. So it's not like, you know, this one person is just the worst and everybody else gets it but you. It's that we as humans don't really um, take the time to self-evaluate. We're, we're kind of in this routine. Um, we, we get comfortable in the, the same types of people, the same types of, um, you know, the same day. Like we'll go to the same coffee shop, we'll go to the same, um, you know, we'll, we'll have We'll have um, events with the same friends. So we are in this, you know, kind of state of comfort. And if that is not working for you, it's hard to say, okay, maybe it's something that maybe it's something that I need to change about myself. We tend to say, okay, the person was not right, and he's got this, and they've got that, and he didn't do this, he didn't do, he didn't, he didn't do that. And it's because we don't take a whole lot of time to say, okay, how did, how, what was my role in that? You know, we're not we're not victims to circumstance. We're not victims to mm-hmm. the things that happen to us. So um, sometimes people do take on that victim role where we say, okay, well, this person did this to me. He lied to me, or you know, he said that he was this when he really wasn't this, or you know, he wasn't all that he was cracked up to be. And it's like, okay, did you listen to the red flags? Did mm-hmm. you know? Did you did, did some warning sign go off in your head, but that you chose to ignore, or? Were you looking at this person for all the wrong reasons? So not to say that you are totally to blame, to, to blame in, in any situation that is negative or that, that, that doesn't work out, but there is some involvement that you had that is a factor. So just like what you said, you've been in two relationships um, that, you know, unfortunately didn't work out, but you know you're, you've taken the time to say, okay, what was my role in that? Did I pick mm-hmm. the wrong partner? Did I did I ignore my intuition? Did I decide that this person was worth the trouble because I either was afraid of being alone or afraid of um, or finding out that there isn't anyone better? What caused you to either stay in that relationship or stay in that relationship that long? So there's always something that we could take away from every experience that we have with people, and it's our job to use that as a way to push forward what we do want in the future. I love that. I love that. You know, and as you were speaking um, in reference to understanding what it is that we want and this could be uh, something that we, we've attracted, I just recently, Julie, have gone through mm-hmm. something of this nature. And, and not to give the, the whole story away, but um, I have been in a situation where a gentleman that I used to see um, several years ago after my divorce um, really wanted that relationship, but it, I, it was more so me wanting it and him mm-hmm. not wanting it. And then um, just a few weeks ago, he comes back in, into my life and um, calling and wanting to talk. But I felt very uneasy because I knew how it was back then where I was trying to put in so much work to get him to see that I really wanted to spend time with him. So I've gotten to the yep. point now I'm like, no, I don't, I don't really want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with mm-hmm. that. And then all of a sudden, once I decide that that's not what I want to do, he's in a relationship. Hmm. <laughs> well, you know, and, and sometimes it's about timing, right? You know, we're right. we're not perfect. We still have things that we need to work on. And and to you know, and men have that same, they have that same, um, you know, ability too to say okay, I might have messed up this relationship, and it wasn't because of the girl. It was because I wasn't ready. It was because I was messing up, or it's because I was, you know, either jaded from a previous relationship or I, I, had, I had some maturing to do or, you know, it just wasn't the right place or the right time. So sometimes men come back. I'm not saying this is all men, but sometimes men come back because they learned a lesson. They, you know, they feel like you're the one that got away. And they'll try it, and if it's, if it's not right for you or, you know, they haven't changed that much or the things mm-hmm. that broke off the relationship have not been resolved, then there's no reason to go back to that. But mm-hmm. there's, I can't fault the man for trying. <laughs> I, can't fault, I can't fault the man for trying. Uh, but, again, it is our job to really decide whether what we do is going to towards what we want or keep us away from what we want. Yes, 
good information. I love that. I love that. Now, let's talk about the some of the exercises within the mm-hmm. workbook that you find uh, very important for us to, to take away from. What are your thoughts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so the the most important um, exercise, in my opinion, is the first one, the relationship readiness quiz. And this one is about um, – it's about 10 – 10 to 12, uh, about 10 uh, sections where it talks about um, my relationship history and patterns. Um, It talks about emotional issues. It talks about my communication style. It talks about my um, requirements versus my needs and my wants. It really Mm -hmm. breaks you all the way down because it says in every area of my life, what, what needs improving, what am I doing okay in, and what am I doing amazing at? And so once you start to see on paper areas that you need to improve, that will tell, that will give you an indicator as to why relationships in the past previously didn't work out. So, for example, I, um, I hold a while we wait brunch here in Charlotte uh, once a month, and I put this exercise um, on the ladies, and I said, okay, tell me uh, where you feel like you need the most improvement. And one of the ladies said, you know what, I feel like I was okay in everywhere but my communication. Um, Mm -hmm. I didn't really communicate what I really wanted. I expected the guy to know what I wanted. Um, You know, I felt like he was a mature man. I felt like he was a grown man, and I feel like real grown men should know that this is what I want. And I said, "Mm." but you're not the same as the next woman. So how would he know what you want versus what you need versus what you require? Just because you're a woman, that does not mean that we all require the same things at the same time and in the same way. So that's something that was um, that was a detriment to her past relationships because she never, she never communicated that to him. So this is important because, only would it allow you to pinpoint exactly where where in your life you need to focus on, but how that impacts your relationships with people, and not not just men, not just intimate relationships, but friendships too, relationships with family, relationships with your coworkers. I mean, it, it impacts everything in your life. We can't really divorce um, relationships from life. Uh, you know, some things that are going on in your relationships can spill over into things that are going on in your life because it's the same core issues that need to be improved. Mhm. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Now, and I want to uh, go back, if I may, because I really believe that communication is very important. Where you are in your relationship, if it's starting out and, and you all are getting uh, to the, the point of wanting to know more about each other or you're in the relationship and you realize that communication is a factor, um, mm-hmm. I think that you need to tackle that head on. That was one of yes. the things, Julie, in, in my marriage and, and part of the the demise of the marriage is because, you know, my ex-husband and our husband at the time didn't know how to communicate. Mm-hmm. And, and I tell you, that becomes a huge issue if, if you don't handle it up front. Yep. So, yes. and I'm, I'm glad that she, she realized that communication was an area that she needed to work on. When you are speaking with the young ladies, are you finding that communication is one of the main factors and and we're not able or we don't know how to express what we're feeling and when to say Um, how we're feeling? Yeah, it's one of them. Um, I I know communication is a big one, um, but there's also my emotional issues. Um, some, Some things we just haven't gotten past. Um, okay. We haven't really, we haven't really um, thought about what happened in the past relationship, or even what happened in um, childhood or adolescence, where you know how we de- how we are um, defined, how do we define love, and how do we define relationships, and um, how do how do we how do we forgive um, people that have hurt us or, or wronged us in the past. How do we get mm-hmm. over that so that we aren't um, we aren't really making the next person pay for the mistakes of the last? So I think relationship history and patterns, my emotional issues and my communication, uh, those are the those top the list, um, and it all has to do with your past impacting your future. Wow, I love that. I love that. Now before we we uh, transition over 
to uh, your matchmaking business. Julie, I want to talk about um, the workbook. How can the ladies access the workbook? And is there future classes that they can uh, take with you one-on-one? Yep, yep, absolutely. So if um, you were to go to my website, uh, www.elisimone.com, um, there is a section on my website that allows you to order the, um, a, uh, the, the workbook in an ebook format. Uh, so you can, you know, once you, once you select it, you'll get it PDF version. Um, you could also, if you wanted more than just the workbook, you wanted, you know, me to talk through the workbook and how it can, how you can really uh, benefit from it, then I offer a strategy session with the, uh, with the workbook. So not only do you have the workbook with you, but we're going through it to say, okay, first week to um, work on, you know, this exercise or based on what I'm hearing from you, really take um, exercise, you know, 11, um, take some time with that. Maybe you want to sit on it for maybe a week or so before you dive into it because that's really heavy depending on, you know, where, what your opportunity for improvement is. So um, those are both ways that, um, you know, women or, or anyone really can access um, the workbook and how, how you can use it best. Great information, great information. So it's nice we are speaking with Ms. Julie Wadley tonight. She's giving us some great information. And with reference to a self-study guide, this is to prepare for the attraction, love that you desire to have in your life. So great information. Julie, I want to transition over, if I may, to uh, your matchmaking business. Um, yeah. Eli Simone, um, as I stated, a wonderful beautiful website that you have come up with and um what I love most about this particular website, you 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 focused it on um beautiful women and women of, of color that are searching mm-hmm. and desiring to have real love. Talk to us a little bit about um your matchmaking business and why was it so important to bring it to life? Yeah, so um I remember um, when I when I back in 2013 when I was thinking about um, what business I, I, I wanted to uh, venture into, I knew that it had to be in the relationship space, um, and I had a I had a particular uh, person in mind. I was I was. I remember I was in New York with my sister and a friend of mine, and uh, we were talking about relationships, and uh, there was one one of my friends just was uh, very upset, very um, very distraught about the uh, ending of a relationship that she really wanted. She, she really thought that it was going to lead to marriage. And so mm-hmm. in my head, I'm like, oh, my gosh, this woman – is amazing she is there's nothing bad about her that i could ever point to she's beautiful she's educated she's you know family oriented um you know physically attractive she had all of the makings in my opinion of a woman and 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 wife material and i was thinking like why 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 are they still single why is she still single why are all of these and i thought about all of the women that I know that are amazing, beautiful, attractive, um, all of these accolades, but and yet they're still single. And so when I started this business, I wanted to help that woman, you know. And it ha- whenever I thought about the wo- whenever I visualized the woman that I wanted to help, it was a black woman. Mm-hmm. So um, I decided and and. You know, originally, I, I when I started my business, it was you know I, I marketed it to everyone. But as I as I uh, moved on in my business, I realized that I needed to really focus on um, you know women of color because um, society has really uh, created this narrative that um, you know women of color and specifically black women they're single, they're you know uh, probably a mother um you know and and can't get a man you know they're incredibly intelligent have all these high power jobs but they go home and they're alone and mm-hmm. i wanted to change that narrative i wanted to not not only change the narrative but help the women who who might who might actually you know fit that description because it's not about not being able to find or keep a man there's something individually is and it's not a one a one problem or one solution fits all but there's something that i i could do 
through my learnings as a, as a coach and as a matchmaker to help women um, in this particular uh, area of their life. So um, I, I really just wanted to help women who looked like me and I knew would be amazing, um, you know, amazing uh, wives and uh, amazing mothers, and they just needed um, someone to be an advocate for that. I love that. I love that. Now, I want to talk about um, your matchmaking business and how mm-hmm. it uh, relates to what, you know, people are doing now. You know, online dating has, has grown tremendously. And I don't know for a fact that, you know, some of these online sites have marketed themselves to be like matchmakers, and really they're not. So talk to mm-hmm. anyone listening <laughs> tonight um, the difference between what it is that you do versus what we see out on the Internet, the dating site. So the biggest benefit to online dating is the sheer quantity of people who are at that site. So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the biggest or probably the biggest um, online dating site, Match.com, I mean, they they boast millions upon millions of people. And so given your area, you can be in, you know, Kentucky or you can be in Danville, Virginia, or you can be in a very small, um, you know, area on the map, and you'll still have a, a choice of thousands of people in your area who you could possibly date. And given that we are in a society where time is money and we don't have a whole lot of it, um, we don't put as much effort into that face-to-face connection. We don't have a whole lot of time to be going out and meeting new people. So it's a sign of the time um, of, of just using online dating as a convenient way of, of sorting through tons of people or tons of men or tons of women to decide, okay, this this group of women or this group of men, they, they kind of fit me, so I'm going to concentrate on this rather than, you know, wasting hours upon hours in a club or in some sort of, you know, networking event and getting nowhere. So there's definite mm-hmm. benefits. There's definite benefits to online dating, but, you know, some of the drawbacks are uh, people lie. <laughs> people oh, <yeah>. exaggerate. <laughs> people exaggerate. I mean, um, I'm, I'm sure I'm sure I, 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 I'm sure I would describe myself a little bit better than I am in reality, but, again, that's, that's human nature. You know, someone who's five, five, eight and a half, hey, maybe I'm five, nine, hey, maybe I'm five, ten. You never know. It depends on what shoe I'm wearing. So, you know, you have you know other people who are you know they'll they're, they'll they will exaggerate um, position or they'll they'll exaggerate um, just how much money they have. I mean, it's it's really easy to uh, make yourself or paint yourself in a much better picture than you are in reality. So when you mm-hmm. are dating people off of online dating, it's still a crapshoot because you have to then decide, hey, does this person really? What whatever they said about themselves is it true? And you know you can you can be three six months into a, a relationship with this person and then come to find out that they completely lied about one piece and then the relationship is over, or you know maybe it takes a couple of hours on a date to say okay this guy said he was you know finance executive and he really just worked for you know enterprise you know it's just it, it can be it can be anything so. You know, we get frustrated because our, our hopes get too high. You know, we our expectations right. are too high. And so when when we meet the person in reality, no matter – and they could be a great person, but the fact that they exaggerate it, they are completely, um, you know, just saying, nope, nope, you lied, nope, you over-exaggerated, I don't want to have anything, anything to, to do with you. So we get disappointed very easily uh, with online dating. So that's that's the drawback. Um, the difference mm-hmm. between that and what I do is that I take all of that um, that noise out. My clients tell me what they're looking for, um, mm-hmm. and uh, again, they don't on on online dating. They don't have a filter. They don't have someone um, challenging what they say. I challenge my clients. They'll say, "Oh, I want someone who you know makes." Uh, uh, just as much money as, as me or more. Okay, why? 
well, because I feel like, you know, if this is a woman, oh, I feel like, you know, I want to be financially secure. And, I, and I'm like, okay, well, what does financial security mean to you? You know, what if this person was making twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars less? Does that mean that this person isn't as financially secure as you? So I am, I am challenging their requirements, and okay. I'm forcing them into uh, really talking about what matters, which is, are they honest? Do they have integrity? Are they family oriented? Do they have, you know, a similar uh, value set as you? Um, you know, do they have the same lifestyle as you? So I'm really, I'm really ta- um, helping my clients. As long as as well as um, helping them find um, a quality match, I'm. It's really about me um, holding them accountable to whatever it is that they say, and also um, finding men, men or women who fit in with what they need, not necessarily what they want, because everything that glitters mm-hmm. is gold, and you don't want to. You know, I'm not. I'm not here to find you you know, um, ballers and um, CEOs and, you know, um, entrepreneurs. That doesn't make a, that doesn't make a husband. I'm That's here to right. tell you this is what you, based on what I know of you and what you tell me, this is the type of guy that you need. You don't need all that extra stuff. So get that out of your head right now. We're going to mm-hmm. go after this type of guy. So I, I, I want my, my clients need to trust that I'm going after what it is that they need versus what it is that they want because we get too wrapped up into what we want, and it ends up not working out anyway. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wow. So that that right there is, is what I love. I love uh, the fact that you are sitting down with them. And, again, I'm going to use that word transparency. You know, you're getting them to be very transparent because, just as you said, you can come in and, and, and uh, say you want this ideal person, and in actuality, you're not ready for that. Mm-hmm. You're telling yourself that yep. you are, but you're not ready. And now you're, yep. fake, you're you're at the point where you can really meet someone of, of quality and have the relationship that you desire yep. to have. I, I love that. I love that. Yep. Now, if you will, um, take us through your steps of getting started with um, Eli Simone, what are some of the things that, that you are requiring from uh, your clients as they're coming into the business? So the clients that I eventually accept, it has to be it has to be a two way street. They need okay. to feel comfortable with me, and I need to feel comfortable with you. I need to mm-hmm. know that I could successfully match you, um, and they need to trust me. So. The first sort of um, hoop <laughs> uh, is the first consultation, you know, the the, the call where I, I ask them to speak, uh, tell me about themselves and, you know, where they are right now versus where they want to be and what their relationship goals are and all this, all this good stuff. So as I'm listening to them speak, if I, if I hear that, all, that everything that they're speaking is surface and they're all aesthetics, and they're all, you know, it's it's all kind of just fluff. I'm like, okay, what is it that you really want? Because this this is this means nothing. This isn't a, you're not telling me a whole lot. So once mm-hmm. we kind of get down into, okay, this is what I really want and why, um, I say I tell them whether or not I can be successful with you or I can. Um, if I and I and I and I've had um, a couple people that I've had to turn away or turn down because. They weren't really looking for a uh, a match. They weren't looking for a long term commitment or with, with someone that they they could really build a life with. They were looking for arm candy. They were mm-hmm. looking to um, you know have someone that they could showboat around, and that's not what I do. So I will kindly tell people or graciously tell people, you know, I, I'm probably not the matchmaker for you based on. Um, what I feel that I could do. Um, two, that person has to be coachable because not everybody, um, you know, you have an idea of what you're looking for, and if you're not listening or if you're not taking constructive feedback, then, again, I can't be successful with you. So people who are, aren't coachable or people who won't listen to um, feedback or advice, 
I probably wouldn't take on. Um, but if I do decide to take you on, then we get into the nitty gritty about your relationship patterns, um, you know, what you, what you find attractive, who you find attractive, um, what your lifestyle looks like right now, what your lifestyle looks like in about five, ten years, um, what type of person would uh, fit that. Um, and then I, then I, in my head as they're speaking, I can say, okay, I have a couple people um, in mind uh, in my database right now, or I know that um, given some time, I could probably find that person. So if I say, you know what, I feel like I could be successful working with you, um, you know, I, I would love to take you on as a client. Um, when they are a client, um, we, I am, um, the first couple of weeks we're just really setting the stage as to, you know, how we're going to be working together, um, mm -hmm. the communication um, between the two, or between the two of us, how I'm going to be sharing uh, different um, candidates with, with them, and whether or not they are interested in, in them and they're not, or they're not. Um, and, then, and then once we go through that process, then it becomes about recruiting and um, vetting um, potential matches. So I'm interviewing, um, Matt, let's say I have a, a woman client. Um, I'm interviewing um, matches, of, of men as matches, and um, if they, if they're, you know, they go through the interview of flying colors, then I'm, you know, building a profile for them, and then I'm presenting it to my client to say, hey, I just spoke with a great guy, he's X, Y, Z, he does this for a living, he, you know, does this as hobbies, he really values X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 and so my client has a right to refuse or accept. If she accepts, then great. I coordinate the date. They go out on the date, and hopefully they have a great time, and it's a match. If it's not a match, then I want to know why from both. Mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, you tell me, client, why you feel that this isn't a match. And, again, I'm challenging them on what they say because, again, if it's a bunch of surface stuff, oh, well, you know, he um, he was – he didn't have the right <laughs> shoes on or, you know, he kind of, he didn't look, he looked at, he looked um, uh, like like he was in a hurry or it was it didn't have anything to do with the actual date and getting to know them. Then I'm mm -hmm. challenging it. I'm saying, okay, are we too quick to turn this person away? Because, you know, based on my interview, he sounds like a great guy for you. So what, what happened between, you know, the description and then the reality? Um, and, if I say, okay, how about we give this person another chance? They can accept and they or they could decline. Um, but usually, if I feel like there could be a connection that just needs to give get another chance, give it another chance, then I'll you know I'll recommend going out on a second date. If I find out that the date went horribly and the guy was horrible and he was completely um, you know he was late or he was disrespectful in any way or anything like that, then I'm definitely reaching out to him and telling him that, that that's not happening or that's not cool mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. this 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 is not um this isn't a match and here's why so each person gets feedback because at, at the end of the day i'm helping i want to help my client and i want to help the match with figuring out is it is it something that you're doing that is um adding to the demise of a potential relationship you know it's it's a coaching moment for both sides to say hey you know, next time you may want to think about asking more questions about them instead of waiting to answer questions. You know, nobody likes mm -hmm. an interview, um, an interview date. So, uh, you know, it's it's more like, okay, next time, how about you ask more questions or how about you go, instead of going to dinner, maybe you go take a walk. Maybe you guys do something fun like go-karting to, you know, kind of get the nervousness out the way. There's so many uh, different ways to date nowadays to get to the actual person rather than surface level questions. I like that good information that you're sharing. And, you know, lastly, before we uh, end our conversation for tonight, I want to talk about the, the cost. And I don't want, mm -hmm. I don't want to say cost for information. I want to say an investment. Talk mm -hmm. to us about that. Because I think that when, when someone comes to, to speak with you, Julie, they are investing um, not only in um, the, the area of finding true love. This is like a life investment, bringing someone else into your life. 
and you're mm-hmm. assisting them with that. So can can you talk to us a little bit about that, the investment part of it? Yeah. So and and that's pretty that's pretty much the number one question um, <laughs> that most people want to want to know. I mean, with anything that um, you know sounds like a, a high ticket uh, service. I mean, it's not you're not buying a pair of shoes, um, and you're not you know you're not you're not um, you're not going online dating. So if you're if you're using online dating as a barometer for how much you know how much to invest into a matchmaker, it's probably on the um, it's probably not realistic. Um, when you think about it, um, this is a three to six months, sometimes even a year process, um, where we are diving into who you are, what you are, and the type of person that um, it will enhance your life. So it's a lot of it's a lot of work, and there's a lot of labor that goes into what it is that we do as matchmakers. In terms of the fee. Um, you know, some some matchmakers charge anywhere um, start at fifteen hundred dollars or twelve hundred dollars, um, and I know some matchmakers who charge anywhere um, to twenty to twenty five thousand dollars. It really depends on um, one how long that that matchmaker has been in the business, um, how many um, people they have in the database, or just how exclusive they are. You know, some matchmakers only work with millionaires. Um, other matchmakers work with, you know, people who um, are blue-collar farmers. So it just depends on um, the type of matchmaker and, and where you are, where you're located. You know, if you're in a um, high, high um, um, income city like a New York or L.A. or D.C., then you're going to pay a little bit more than someone who, you know, maybe is in Kansas or, you know, mm-hmm. Oklahoma. Uh, for me, I'm a little, I'm a little bit, um, you know, in between that, and I don't have a set um, price because everybody's different. Uh, sometimes, okay. um, sometimes clients need a little bit more um, support on the front end, just figuring out who do I really want. You know, I'm not here to put butts in seats. I'm really help. I'm really, really here to help you um, move you forward or towards your relationship goal. So whether that means all right, we have an issue with confidence, we have an issue with image, or we have mm-hmm. an issue with um, speaking or, you know, uh, sparking conversation or whatever whatever the obstacles are, we're working on that before we get you to your date because we want to set you up, or at least I want to set you up for success. So depending on what the needs are is where the price will um, will will go up or down. Good information. I love that. You know, Julie, I've enjoyed having you here in the studio. You have given us um, some great information in regards to your self-help book, which is the self-study guide to prepare and attract love in your life, and also about your your agency, um, if you will. We'd love to end the conversation either with some encouraging words or maybe some tips and advice that we haven't shared in tonight's conversation. If you wish to do that, I would love for you to do so at this time. Yeah, I mean, the I, I, I would say to anyone who is looking to um, go into a matchmaking or looking to go into a date coaching type of service, really be open to mm-hmm. um, something that you're not um, used to. Um, you might you might be surprised that your issue is not finding the right one, or it's about being open. It's about maybe being um, you know aware of your surroundings so that you're finding more people. I would say listen to the feedback of the professional because they've been around the block, <laughs> they they've done this before, and they probably have a little bit more um, experience in what the solutions are. So uh, go in there with an open mind, with an open heart, and um, you know good luck on your relationship goals. Awesome. And if you will, Julie, share with everyone listening tonight here on Love Zone Monday how we can get more information about you and continue to support you in your efforts. Thank you. You can reach me at www.elisimone.com. Uh, you can also reach me directly by email at julie.wadley at elisimone.com. Great. Julie, again, it has been a pleasure having you here on on Love Zone Mondays. I want to also extend another invite out to you. I have another show here on the platform, which is the Ladies Lounge, and would love for you to come back so we can really uh, dive into 
your your matchmaking business and, and some of the things we as ladies need to do when we're trying to attract that that certain love. So I would love to invite you to the ladies' lounge and, and talk yeah. to us a little bit more if you'd like to do that. Yeah, I would love to come. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Well, again, thank you, Julie, for coming in tonight, giving us some great information. Definitely we look forward to having you back again here in the studio. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, of course, thank you here right there for Miss Julie Wadley. You know, she came in tonight. She spoke with us about her brand new self study uh, guide, which is to prepare and for attract love in your life. And she also spoke with us about her uh, matchmaking service, the Eli Simone uh, matchmaking services. Of course, all of that information and more can be found at Kathy B. Source Radio Network, as well as our main station page, Source Radio Network. What I love about this conversation, and you know, we started out saying something that was very important. It was all about being transparent. I truly believe, Source Nation, when we are desiring to have uh, certain types of relationships, and we're definitely focusing in on um, longevity and success, transparency is one of the things that we truly need to focus on. If you're not ready to jump out there and begin to have those important conversations, start by yourself. Start writing out the things that that you love to do. Start writing out the things that you uh, desire to do. That's one of the things that that Dr. Young and I often speak about here is how can you expect for anyone to love you when you don't love yourself? How can you expect anyone to understand who you are if you don't know who you are? you got to take the time to do the work. Take the time to do the work and take the time to start with you. And I promise you, once you're able to do that, the love, the relationship that you desire to have, they will come. But put the work in first, they will be okay. Again, that was Miss Julie Wisely. All of her information and more can be found on Kathy B. Source Radio Network as well as our main station page, Source Radio Network.